All right, so here we are. We've got the Anycubic Ace Pro. I'd say this is the uh, version two variant. It's got the uh, the buffers in there. Well, I wouldn't call them buffers. I'd probably just call them guides. And they're supposed to slot in place to align the filament spool so that the spools themselves don't come out of alignment and wonk around and things like that. You know, that's a pretty basic upgrade, in my opinion, from the original Ace unit, which I also had, which I got rid of because it was just it was pretty bad, to be honest. Um, the Creality, in comparison to Creality and Bamboo CFS systems, they have a pressure pad guide system with PDFE tube guide system as well, coming up as well, uh, with a similar, you know, uh, exterior component to the PDFE tube that then guides over the top of the spool. We're going to take it to the next level today. So we're going to also opt to uh, correct the issues of not only the tangling spool system as it retracts and uh, extrudes through the the buffer system in the ACE unit, but we're also going to change out these rollers at the back. So the reason being is the rollers at the back themselves, um, they've made them to be quite lightweight. I'll just pop one out so we can have a look. They've made them be quite lightweight. As you can see, I'll pull the shaft out there. And the roll themselves are made to be quite lightweight. As you can see, you know, they've gutted the center of it. You know, it's just pretty much just a basic plastic roller with the center gutted out of it. So what we're going to do is I've printed some rollers that are slightly larger in diameter and what that's going to do is these are free rolling at the back and the motorized mechanism is at the front just down here and what this is going to happen is it's going to not only raise the spool up slightly but it, being that it's going to have a, a slightly rear slightly bigger rear roller you can see the size comparison there uh basically what that's going to do it's like changing the gear ratio on your motorcycle on your timing chain or your sprockets and basically we're just going to increase the, the rear roller gear i suppose you could say and that's going to give us slightly more uh, rotational uh, rotation itself uh, and thus allowing it to slightly pull more filament as it's rotating back, which should enable it to decrease the slack of the spool as it's rotating, uh, rotating back. So a larger spool. Now, some will say yes, but that depends dependent on the, the motor itself at the front of the ACE uh, Pro um, multicolor spool system. But even just having a larger spool at the back will put a little bit more pressure on it to roll quicker back, even if it's just, you know, half a centimetre, five mil, that over a full rotation of the spool is going to make a big difference. And then on top of that, we're going to run some PDFE tubes with these replacement uh, filament feeders. We're, we're going to take this front panel out and we're going to put this in here and it's slightly sloped. I've printed these out of PETG and it's sloped so that the PDFE tube goes in there and you can see we've got the clips just the same as a standard. So got four of those pop in and the actual PDFE tube is going to guide through there. It's going to sit in there like so, and then we're going to pop that in and it's going to guide itself over the spool as well. So that's what we're going to do. So let's start taking this, this thing apart and uh, replace the rollers and the tubes, and we'll go from there. The other option is when you do this, when you replace the PDFE tubes, and then you put your little extension, your little flare tube on the end of it, uh, there are flat ones you can get as well from different uh, slicer printables and Creality Cloud and Maker World and Maker Online and so on. Uh, they've got square ones, flat ones, cone ones like this. And you can basically, if you want to, you can get these little PDFE hydraulic little adapters, just like you have on your printers for your extruders. And you can screw them in if you want to. You can screw them in the end so they become a, you know, the attachment for the PDFE tube coming out. Or as some people have done, you can actually have them so that even if you want to use the small ones, you can. You can see that. And you can have that running out if you want to. You can thread that into there and then have them running out like so and then have your tube coming out that way. It's entirely up to how you want to do it. Uh, I generally find the most simplest way to do it. I've got the, the little PDFE tube hydraulic little uh, lock tabs there just in case I want to do it. But I'm going to just run it with just uh, press fit to see how it goes for the time being and then later on I'll do it. The rollers themselves, I printed these out of ASA. I did print some ones out of uh, ABS. It's up to you how you want to do it. You can print them out of uh, PETG if you want, ABS, ASA. Personally, I'd probably go with ABS or ASA like I have. Just reason being is you're just less likely to have any type of uh, heat, mal mal malleable, mal I can't even think of the word, but basically malleable plastic that's going to deform over time, especially being this is a heated unit that goes up to 55 degrees. Um, you know, PETG may or may not, but just to be on the safe side, ASA or ABS would probably be the better option if you could do that. So let's change these rollers out. Probably have to drill the holes out a little bit more because I don't think the actual 
uh, pin's going to slide in there. That's a bit tight. So I'll drill that out. We'll come back and uh, we'll get this happening. All right, so we've drilled these out um, so they fit quite nicely. You will find if you do, I'll put the links to these uh, prints, STL files uh, in the description so you can download what you need, including the, the new replacement inserts for the ACE unit. Uh, with these, if you do go this route, uh, you will have to just drill that out a little bit. I had to drill that out, just hone it out so it's a nice, nice loose fit. Um, so quite simply, we just pop that in there, press them in place, and then each one, one at a time, move along to the next one. So it's pretty much just a case of just popping these out and each one just there you go. So not much to this at all really. One at a time, pop them in place, press them down. I might just leave that loose for a second while I pop them all out. It's easy to use a screwdriver and just turn it sideways and out they pop. Pretty straightforward. Nice and easy. And then the next stage we'll uh, pop this front cover off and replace these. Oh, look at that, we just leave it like that and slide it on. And then uh, replace these front inserts. Press that down, that one down, and uh, voila. So that should help a little bit with the rolling. Uh, give us a bit more it, that's a bit of a buckled cardboard spool, and that's why I put these runners on there. But that should make a big difference as opposed to these ones. So, a bit of a size difference. Hopefully, that helps with the retraction, give us a little bit more tension on the spools as they retract back. Um, and yeah, so that's what we want from that one. All right, so let's rip this front cover off and let's get these inserts in. Hopefully we don't break these and I mince it. So you've got three pins. As you can see, you've got one there, one there, one there, and one there. And the PDFE tube it's underneath as well. So we just want to push that out. So we'll try and push those out there, breaking them. We'll come back and, yeah. All right, just to show you, these can be a little bit tricky. So you want to pry one screwdriver down there. Just give it a bit of a press on the edge of another one. Once you get one, it's pretty much a matter of it'll just pop down off both sides and you can just press it down there you go and then it pops and you just give that a press and there you go it pops up on the other side so that's pretty straightforward give that a bit of a push in there and that just pries out slowly but surely I'll press there if it gets a bit stuck just Flange it up with the screwdriver, like so, and voila, there's your pin. We're going to be replacing those with the PETG ones that are, that are chamfered for our PDFE tube. So that's pretty much how you get those out. One more to go. Like I said, everything's a little bit tricky all the time. Is what it is. That one's just popped. There we go. And that one's ready to pop out, so we'll just push, give that a bit of a nudge. Give her a helping hand. Voila. Always a bit tricky. There we go. And that one's the last one out. So that was pretty straightforward. And as for these ones, we'll pop these straight in. Now you want to make sure you get these in the right way. So we want them sloping. You want to make sure you get these in the right way. So you want to have them sloping so they, they the chamfer goes that way and over. So make sure they're the right way. Pop them in. Get these little buggers in. And press them in. Voila. There we go. And that's how you want it pretty much, just like that. Alright, so we'll come, we'll put those in and we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so we got them in. So the PDFE uh, new inserts are in and we've got our PDFE tubes in. Now, because this has got a slight camber on it inside that PDFE tube insert, it was a bit of twisting and nudging, but it's press fitted in there. One of the things you want to make sure about is on the original ones, it has the PDFE tube slightly extending, uh, extending out from the actual insert. 
And I've done the same on that, these as well. And the reason being is because if we look a bit closer, you'll notice that on the on the PDFE guide motorized mechanism that um, extrudes the filament into the machine, it's got a camber on it so the PDFE tube seats right into the insert for where the PDFE tube goes. So that's really important to make sure you've got that little bit just overhanging there so it's a nice press fit into there. So that's ready to go back on, zoom back out. That's ready to go back on there. And then what we need to do once we put this in place is we need to make sure we need to measure it and make sure it's the right length going over the filament spools and then put our feed tubes on. I've gone with the cone style, just like there. Um, just, I don't know, personal preference. That's what I've gone for. Similar to what the uh, CFS on the Creality has. So I've gone with that style. Just got to come down a little bit shorter. And then I'll probably go with a press fit. I was going to put these hydraulic PDFE tubes, or hydraulic, the pressure fat, pressure connections for PDFE. Um, I don't think I will, to be honest. I don't think there's a need for that. I mean, I could put them on like that uh, and then have that threaded in there, I suppose. Um, I don't think these are going to come off. If they do, then I'll look at doing that and I'll just put a thread inside there and then just screw that straight back on there. So that's an option as well. I won't need to put on there. That was in very snug. These are in very snug and tight, so that's not going to be a problem. So I don't see that being an issue. So yeah, so all right, we'll get that pressed on. Um, these seem to be a little bit loose. So what I might do is a quick and easy, simple thing to do with that is just grab your screwdriver, Phillips head, and just turn it just to flare it a little bit like that. And just flare it out and then that gives a bit more of a tight press and that's now tight so that's that option there obviously they're a bit long we're going to cut them a bit shorter and that's pretty that's on there pretty tight so that's an option if you want to go to that route uh i'll probably go on that route just for now see how it goes and if they i find these caps come a little bit loose then i'll just end up putting either these on uh the end of it and then put the the cone caps on top of that so all right we'll get that done and uh, we'll fire it up and see where we go All right, I've got a spool from GTEC, just random, random, one, random ones off the shelf. Pop that in there, and we'll get an idea of the guides, what we want. And we'll use an anti-cubic spool as well, just for shits and giggles. And it gives us an idea of the where we want to be cutting the length for that. So, if we want to be fussy, we can get the steel rule out and do it that way as well. So we can measure straight up and that's 190 mils these are some of them a bit longer than others 190 i think this one's a bit longer yes 190 so i'm thinking basically want to make it so that when the filament extrudes back of the pdf tube not so much when it's feeding but when it's retracting we want it to retract over the top of the spool uh the bigger rollers at the bit rear that's going to give us a little bit more height at the back so then it's going to actually put more pressure on it to rotate further slightly more so it shouldn't actually um, it shouldn't be tangled up or as loose when it's re-spooling on the retraction so that's what we want so let's say 120 yeah i'd say 120 120 looks pretty good so if we do that neither here or there it doesn't have to be perfect but you know Somewhat's good enough. Get our PDFE cutter there. Line her up somewhat. That there looks good. Fortunately for me, I've got plenty of these. So we'll cut that nice and clean. And that just, just to get an idea. Oh, that, that, looks pretty, that looks pretty spot on to me. I don't know about you, but that looks pretty spot on. 
So if that's now we're going to retract, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's do that. Um, well, that was 125, so neither here or there. We'll cut them all 125, get them what we want. Flare the uh, PDFE tubes, and like I said, if they end up coming loose later on, due to the heat, because it's got the filament dry built in, we can always come back and just put the uh, PDFE connectors on with the little push pin lock. So we'll go about there. It looks a bit, that looks pretty good. Line him up. That's that one done. Like I said, you can just go along roughly and do it if you wanted to. I mean, I'm just being a little bit overly fussy just for the sake of it. Um, there is, you could mark them with the text. That's probably the easiest way. I just don't have one on hand. There's lots of different ways you could do this. You could measure them before you even start. You can put them in there, measure them all the length, and then cut them all perfectly if you, you know, wanted to be that OCD about it. I'm just measuring to the center point of the, just the center point there of the cutter, to the ruler, just rough. Give it a take. Messed that one up. I moved it. So, like I said, the smarter thing would be to use a textar to mark it. But today I'm not the smarter person. <laughs> Is what it is. Say what you will. I'm sure, there'll be people in the comments that'll give me oh, say you should have done this, you should have done that. Well, is what it is, and that's just how it is. They're pretty close. I mean, a couple of mil. I'm not going to write on about that. Same again. Give or take. That looks good enough to me. Boom. So yeah, I mean. That end one, this one's probably a tad bit longer, but you can just sort of go along and just trim that if you wanted to. Like so. I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to flare them, just with this Phillips head. Just push that in, and it's just going to flare the ends. Now, it probably will, and I dare say this again, and people will say this in the comments, it probably will, because it's a heated filament extrusion system that those flaring this probably will make that a little bit loose after time, it'll end up collapsing in. So I probably will end up putting the, the connectors on there, but just to, so we can test it to find out, just to see how effective it is on retraction, we'll just do this for now and we can come back to it. Grab our little connector ends, press them on nice and tight, which is good, like I see, perfect. And I've got one more floor for table somewhere. Oh, there it is there. And there we go, voila. So straight off the bat, that looks better. Pretty happy with that. So let's plug it in, get it hooked up, and uh, we'll see how it goes with the retraction and see if we've solved our problems with our filament retraction and our spaghetti filament mess.